Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Many thanks for having me. Um, a pleasure to be here today and to be able to talk to you all. Uh, my name is Tom House, and I'm an international manager for Queen Ethel Burgers. So today, I'm here to talk to you about how um, to enter a top university in the UK. So what universities are looking for, and also how QE will help get you there. Um, firstly, I want to talk a little bit about Queen Ethel Burgers itself. So we were founded in 1912. So we have over 100 years of experience and we've developed a unique school with a vast array of opportunities enabling students to um, pursue a wide range of interests and aspirations and go on to a variety of different careers in the future. Um, this is the Thorpe and Wood Hall um, where many campuses. Uh, we believe it's about building strong and productive relationships between our teachers and students and amongst the students themselves as well. Our results are a testament to this approach with our interesting way of having the college and faculty, and which are both established in the top 35 schools in the UK. We think that we have a, a very traditional boarding school with a, with a nice modern approach to change things. Um, so this is based just outside the, the city of York in the United Kingdom. Um, it's only an hour and 50 minutes from central London, so it's actually quite close um, connections to London in terms of time if you get the train but we're also very close to Leeds, Manchester and Nottingham airports um, which are some airlines can connect to or go direct to from Turkey. Um, here I'm showing you the campus um, campus, um, and we have currently have 112 acres but as you can see on the edges we have um, more land that we have outside of that area that you can see so if we do need to improve and change things we certainly have uh, the space to grow and do that just to briefly mention the uk education system um, our national curriculum is divided into five stages so key stage one found it um, and at kids age five to seven key stage two is years three to six eight to eleven in the uk key stage three is which is um, age 12 to 14. Um, key stage four is GCSEs and in the UK that starts at 15 and you complete them when you're 16 and that's years 10 and 11 and then key stage five is in the UK years 12 and 13 which is also known as A-levels or in some cases it's referred to as sixth form and that's for students they generally start when they're um, 16, 17 years old and finish when they're 18. Um, here you can see a little pyramid of how we're structured from age 12 onwards. So as I mentioned, we do have four schools in the campus. You can't see the junior school on this, this program, but most of our students who are international tend to join at the age of around 12 anyway. Um, Chapter House is our primary school that does years one to five. And then King's Magna is our middle school. And you can see on the bottom two there. Um, we've shown years um, eight and nine there, but actually it's six, seven and eight and nine we do there. And then what makes us interesting is that, as you can see towards the top of the pyramid, we actually have two high schools. Um, we have Queen Ethelburgers College and then we have the faculty of Queen Ethelburgers. Um, both schools are on the same campus, 10 through to year 13. Um, I'll talk shortly about the difference between them. So I mentioned we have two high schools that do from year 10 to year 13, so GCSEs and A-levels. One is called the Faculty of Queen Ethelburgers. So this offers a personalised path pathway for our students. It's quite innovative in the curriculum in that you can study um, obviously your GCSEs and there are some BTEC choices at that level as well, level two, and then you can do your A-levels and then also level three BTECs as well. Um, we start and they can achieve success through examinations and coursework and types of um, uh, courses suit different types of students and their needs and also their their career as well within the uh, the faculty there's a, a strong academic mentor program they have a specialist support team there to assist the students with everything that they need um, it's important to note that you know our students and the faculty even Different, different type of student. We still have students at many top 10 universities, including at Cambridge and Oxford as well. Um, but also it depends on the subject that they're studying. So some universities are better for certain subjects, so they don't always necessarily pick Oxford and 
or top 10 unis. There's also a little bit more time in the faculty to take advantage of the extracurricular opportunities that we have because there, there will be allowed for this kind of thing in this part of the school. The other school I mentioned that's a high school that also does year 10 to year 30, so um, GCSE A levels, and of course, um, the yeah, Queen Luther Williams College. There is a high level of academic focus expected here. So we're we're expecting them really to be very proactive and self motivated. So faculty students may have the skills, but they need that little bit of a push. In the college, we would be expecting our students to be at that level and wanting to learn and wanting to take their skills to the next level. There is, of course, plenty of support from students, teachers for the students, um, but success obviously depends on how, how much the students really put in and out of it. But the teachers are if they need it, but not quite a direct way as you would have seen in the faculty. We are expecting them to uh, cope with it, the pressure um, of doing well in exams and getting high grades because this also in the college we can students to some element so we can we can, certainly for GCSE within one year to give them the opportunity to extend their knowledge in that subject so for example in year 10 they could do mathematics and in year 11 they could do further mathematics to develop those skills just to give you a quick overview here of the um, a level options that we have as you can see um, a lot of what you'd expect there um, Using further details, please let myself or, or the organisers know, and I can get a, a brochure out to you with all this information, of course. Um, here you can see the BTEC options. So, you're familiar with BTECs, but they were started in the UK around in the um, early 80s. And the idea of um, BTEC subjects in the UK was to have a more vocational course offering. A levels academic, which is based on taking exams at the end of two years. BTECs can be a small exam, but a lot of it is coursework, uh, two years as well. And also once a module in a specific subject area within the subject is completed, it's ticked as done. So the courses are done in a very different way and obviously styles. <coughs> so, um, how we performed in 2019, we've got 70% A star A in the faculty. Um, which is the more vocational school, which puts places it around number three. In Ethelberger's College got 80.05% A star A. Students take three or four A levels. Um, so if you're taking three or four, big chance there of getting A star A if you, if you stay with us. A little bit of a gentry. Um, this year, program. So in 2018, we had four, in 2019, we had two, and two we had seven. We had over get, uh, 42 applied interviews, and then seven have been places at Oxford. Also, we do obviously send to several other schools. You can see three go to, went to Imperial College, 17 to King's College in London, two went to LSE, 24 went to Yale and to uh, the university as well. And these are all top universities in the UK. So as you can see here, three of our students gone on to study medicine, 10 have gone, and 57 have gone on to study some business, economics, or management related subjects. So um, just gives you an idea of the, the kind of courses that are going on to do. So what are you looking for? That's enough about QE. What are university looking for? So there was some research was conducted by ACS um, where they interviewed admissions um, uh, staff at universities. And there are seven sort of key skills that sort of uh, that, that they're looking for, really. Students, a positive attitude towards study is the first thing. The students must demonstrate that they are um, take on an extended essay or personal project related subject. They should be um, researching this, um, showing interest outside of the class. And they're also your ability to time and code as well. That, because there's obviously a lot of work. 
students, students must demonstrate a passion for their chosen subject as well. Um, intended interest in a subject um, goes above what is required in, in, in the classroom. Uh, and extracurricular activities can all help to illustrate this. So it's important that um, they show university tutors that they do. And perseverance are qualities that are highly sought after by employers, never universities as well. So the subject goes along. Universities uh, are also looking for you to show your ability to think and work independently of admissions officers in the UK. Do actually feel that students aren't ready to step up to higher education? Uh, which is quite interesting. So it's very, it's very important to show that you're a well-rounded person outside of your studies and you the life and study workload. <clears throat> they also want to see that you're a self -starter. Taking an open online course can highlight that you're serious about the studying um, and often so you can show that you're committed to that subject and then have evidence as well. Um, we're expecting, uh, sorry, actually and QE as well, are expecting students to engage with their studies, develop ideas and own opinions. Um, it's great to search, to write an essay where you uh, uh, leading figures who to assess, uh, have written about that subject, but it's also for you to own opinion perspective, and this can really set you apart from, from other students when you're applying the university. Um, one percent of admissions university admissions officers look for evidence of commitment and determination. So that's a, a lot of them are looking for that. Um, so any sort of area that even outside the classroom where you're showing that you're taking some kind of responsibility help football team or maybe just taking part um, in doing a first aid course, something like that. Um, even doing music grades, things like that. Um, all these kind of things show an interest in subjects, show an interest inside the class, interested in discovering. Um, one other thing that's really good to do is volunteering. It's not just great for the world, but it's good for people around you, but also makes you feel good. It looks fantastic in a university application, particularly if it's related somehow to the subject that you're doing. But certainly showing responsibility, showing your ability to solve problems and having that commitment is something that um, university. <clears throat> this is very, very key as well. Having an inquiry. And again, 1% of look for evidence of students who it can, can it does speak very much to the previous point that I made. But do project, uh, and do, do you research further something that you found interesting in a class? So are you taking the classroom back home and more knowledge <clears throat> to, to talk to the teacher about when you come, come back into the classroom? Um, it's, it just suggests that um, you're, you're able to think and work independently. And the, um, participate and collaborate, it's quite obvious of university admissions officers said they look for an ability to work well in groups so any evidence dance it could be a football team um, it could be so as part of a group to, um, to help somebody out um, that that you done group work and shown how to work with a group they're looking for people to um, set up societies or think of new ideas for their students' unions or or for the university itself and these kinds of things, you know, team they're looking for. Um, some quotes uh, university director missions. Here you can see from Tulane they said we are going through these applications quick the attention and show us what you're passionate about. Um, the one above you can see from Oxford Brooks in the bottom there, it says make sure you're passionate and enthusiastic in your personal statement. Their tip is to show you've done extra reading research. Um, it's what admissions tutors don't really see much of, so that's a good example there. Director of Admissions from Cambridge said they like students to be self did They like them to go and volition, and they like 
understanding of the subject, not just the person who written the book that they've read. The director of missions at Harvard said, you know, the, the questions they look at when they see an application, what difference would they make to Harvard? How they learning of not to their peers in the college? You know, what impact will they have on in the world? People who volunteers in their field, they're the kind of people that the top universities like Cambridge and Harvard are looking for. So in this study that was done by ACS, you can see that 98% top three uh, skill was evidence of a positive attitude, evidence of a passion for their chosen course or subject, and evidence of the ability to think and work independently. Remember, that's not a definitive list. Different courses may have, so the admissions offices may be looking for slightly different things. Um, however, on the whole, if you do look at those sort of seven areas of interest and really put that across to the um, university admissions, it will help you a long way into getting them interested in your application. Um, so we get to the question that you can see is how to help we do, what do we offer that helps you, puts you in a good tension to get these places. Well, firstly, I think it's worth mentioning our careers team. Um, so our careers department is staffed by a qualified and experienced team of professionals um, that often actually do beyond the school. Uh, this kind of advice outside the school as well. Um, they offer advice to all um, students when planning for this. Receive careers education throughout their time with us. Um, appointments are booked, but they, students can book their own appointments as well. So if they want to see the, the careers advisor weekly and get some personal absolutely. If the long way through the school the program exists to support students with university and job applications, maximizes their chance of success. <coughs> um, we encompass every aspect of the Gatsby benchmarks, career education, career education. Um, and so independently recognizes that we, our, our careers team is is doing the things that they should be doing. Um, we do have a careers fair every year. Apprenticeship providers, local employers come to meet our students as well. Um, it's also worth mentioning we have an Ox Oxford preparation program as well. So if students are looking to go to Cambridge, special prep program, um, we have a limited amount of it available in, included in the course and then if they want to pay for additional um, support from, from Oxford or Cambridge then we can do that as well. We also use the more we use lots of different web tools to help inform decisions. All of our students in year 11 start their A-levels will do the Morrisby assessment um, which is done online. So it's one of the most um, well-known and sophisticated services in careers guidance. Um, so for 50 years, been at the forefront of assessing attitudes and learn personal learning style, and it helped really, um, inform what kind of career answers to the questions that they've given, um, help them give a good idea of what initial career and educational choices they could be making in the future. So there's two elements to this. There's a career for the main assessment, active snapshot in preference these of paper assessments as well and then Morrisby will create a unique uh, career report which will help show them um, what they think um, the student will be successful in at university and also a career as well something as a last student 11 very very cool um, and giving some students ideas obviously some students already know what they would like to study in the future that's absolutely fine um, but they're just to take this because it may throw them some things up perhaps that they didn't know about them. we have a rigorous general studies program so our academic senior lead team um, liaise with our careers department to make sure that our students are getting as much guidance as so in year 12 they start our general um uh, which is a one-hour lecture each week at school and a range of guest speakers 
that are supposed to um, inform and also inspire our current students. Um, sessions, old QE students, so old Ethelbergians, um, and they will help give an idea or an they access the career and got the skills required to get the jobs that they can. From universities, um, from universities to talk about their application processes, their expectations for candidates, specific subject areas. So um, students can go to universities. Um, and the students' general knowledge about a variety of topics. So there'll be university studies program, um, how to, you know, there'll be um, improving general Top topics due to speakers coming to talking to the students, so it really, really does help them um, when they're on for university. We also have a unique super curricular program, um, so this allows students to uh, select an option that will benefit them in their chosen career path. It's a timetabled lesson each week that focuses on their area of interest. <clears throat> so it could be helping students with university applications, providing them with skills and knowledge that will benefit them at the interview. And it's it's designed really to help students to further understand the career they are considering as well. Something that the students have to do. Involve, um, all of our students who join us. So already you're on the road to doing work outside of the classroom, which will impress the tutors. Um, you can see some of the options that we have. Design and engineering, debating, and public speaking, uh, European culture, law, medicine, veterinary science, and music and sport. As you can see here, this um, defines a little bit about the uh, medicine and veterinary sciences supercurricular option. So they would we would help students in the professional sector with their university requirements. Would help them apply for work experience. Would give them research in three special specialist areas to develop knowledge beyond the syllabus. They would carry out and lead peer-on-peer -peer teaching, so teaching younger students, um, doing mini and panel interviews, preparation for the BMAT and the UK CAP medical university entry exams, and of course guest speakers. So as you can see here in this super curricula, we're giving lots of out of the seven things I discussed earlier. There's quite a lot in here that will add to the student's portfolio um, beyond the classroom um, that students will be looking for and helping them prepare in that way. Um, you can see here, uh, we have the law here as well. So this will introduce students and give them the opportunity to explore them in the then there'll be different study issues that they'll get into. Um, there'll be a range of topical and controversial issues that will be researched and also discussed. And with skills like research, critical thinking, and also communication. Um, we help them with careers planning and assistance. And of course, the LNAT qualifications, preparation for law courses. We also have an ethics, debating, and public speaking club, which obviously helps develop communication skills and debating skills, which will be very useful in international um, in negotiating deals and partnerships. Um, so anyone who's interested in going to anything that involves any kind of public thing, this would be a fantastic We have a program for anyone who's academically um, capable, but also has a real keen interest in sport and perhaps wants to take it on professionally, or perhaps even do something behind the scenes professionally. We have we have performance sport for those students. We also do music as well. And so that is, as it says in the tin. <clears throat> so we give them the chance to um, develop new instrumental or vocal skills um, if they want to, or just really do well in the, the, in the um, instrument they can play. Uh, it's a non-examined course, in the case of composing music, enjoying yourself and experimenting and really showcasing your own abilities. Um, and also they can work towards, um, they can take additional lessons, actual exams and qualifications should they wish. Now, the IELTS, some universities will only take seven in IELTS and we can help and get to that required level. Um, 
option is the extended project qualification. So this can show, this is basically where you manage a project, carry out research, use a, develop your skill problems, and then evaluate your outcomes at the end. It is a project, but they will have regular meetings with a supervisor. So it could be something like a fashion show. So then the student will have to go and research what people are interested in, go and um, get the resources, um, those, and then do the show and then assess how it went. So it's an example of an EPQ, but it gains UCAS points in the UK. And it demonstrates initiative, passion, and independent learning skills, which again relates to the seven skills I mentioned earlier. And it can stand you out from other competitors applying or other students applying in course place that you're going. Enrichment's very, very um, important at Queen Ethelberger's. Um, and we call it co-curricular enrichment. Um, there are many, many opportunities. Um, so let me let me take you through what we do in terms of get into five categories community, um, which is uh, co contributing to the school community, organizing fundraising for a charity, volunteering, those kind of thing, or re representing the school in some way. <coughs> Then we have creativity. So this is doing cre creative things through artistic design, performance, things like STEM, poetry, got hearts, those kind of things. So being creative in the way you think. Experience, so immersing yourself in culture. So we have King's Theatre at QE, so it's getting involved in that, or opera, or experience other cultures, or visiting other countries. Um, health and exercise is what it says. So being a team, um, maybe if you just like interesting that um, it's always good to be healthy and keep fit and then of course the last category is leadership so um, follow your example you could mentor a new student um, you can motivate and inspire the or you could chair a committee or a council within the school um, being a prep buddy for another another thing you can do so um, there's lots of ways you can show leadership and there's lots of ways that we offer it at QE. But just to see some of the things that we do. So we have a charity committee. We have Dee Cake and Faith, which is having a chat and a cup of tea. Um, nursing home volunteering. Um, we do projects in Zambia. Um, we do BBC Young Reporter as well. So you can take uh, learn what it takes to be a journalist. Club, we have young game designers. So for those who like doing apps and gaming, we can do that kind of thing. Make making club for those interested in um, things like Fantastic Four, Avengers, D, kind of stuff. Um, we have the Investor Challenge um, for those who are looking to go into business. Think Science and Engineering Club for those who are looking to go into any type of engineering or um, medical sort of side of things would be be great for them to join the Science and Engineering Club. Um, things like band, those kind of things as well. Health and exercise. We we obviously have things like athletics, basketball, we do cricket, football, gymnastics, for girls, rugby for boys, swimming, trampolining. As you can see, we also do Brazilian, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, we have K-pop dance, we do, part, I should say, parkour there, wrestling and swim, swim development. So pretty much most activities are covered in what we do in exercise at Q. I mentioned leadership as well. So we obviously have the model United Nations. Um, um, which is where students set up their own business under guidance business mentor and then they can compete against um, local schools and then if they do well that can actually to be um, we do future medics chemistry Olympics, and we do girl guiding young lead programs as well we do have some paid activity at queen ethelberger's too um, we run a pony club we do brownies, we have lambda, which is dancing, um, a variety of different styles of dancing and certificates. We do fencing and golf as well. So, and there are other things that we offer in terms of paid enrichment as well. Um, we do academic day trips, we do weekend full day excursions, we do residential trips. Um, <clears throat> we believe that residential trips are um, 
can provide students with memorable experience where they learn themselves well in the UK and we do some overseas at weekends and we also do things um, that would include the a skill like skiing or dive in Europe. Um, you could contribute to innovation projects, which we do in Africa and we've done in Australia and Thailand in the past. Um, it could just be as simple as going and visit, visiting some sites in a city such as Barcelona, London, Rome, and those kind of things. Um, so we cover a range of different landscapes as well, cities and side and things like that. <clears throat> we can really um, give some examples of, of day trips that we do is Oxbridge evening presentations. Um, we do visits to local food suppliers. On weekends, we visit Blackpool or Manchester. Warner Bros Studios. And um, for our residential, so longer trips, we've taken our students to CERN, Switzerland, uh, Berlin at Christmas, several different types of ski holidays, Iceland for Northern Lights and that kind of thing. So there are many, many enrichment opportunities outside of the classroom that we offer at QE. Last but not least is believe in yourself um, and you can do it. Everybody feels like it's tough and it's hard to, to be in that situation, applying for university. And, wondering if you're good enough. Um, out there, have confidence, believe in yourself, and be yourself, and, and you'll be fine. So that's the end of my presentation. I just want to invite anybody to ask any questions, if anybody's got any. Tom, thank you very much. Uh, let's wait a few moments to see if there is an, uh, any question. Sure. Yes, please ask any questions at all. Uh, just, yes, we, we are optimistic about full term we are um, opening as normal in September um, we hope that everything's uh, uh, over in terms of this pandemic by that time um, even precaution we are gunning towards opening at September as per normal so nothing's changed there in fact this year we to be offering um, a three-week summer course which we've never offered before we will be coming and we'll be in touch with uh, people in Turkey and we'll be doing some advertising about it and we'll let you know. But be optimistic and looking forward to opening in um, September. Housing at QE is residential, so we don't do any homestay. So at the moment, we have just under a thousand borders. Uh, sorry, sorry, just over a thousand borders, um, of, of which around 750 are international, and they all stay on the same campus. So everybody's residential. All the rooms are twin or triple rooms. Price for universities. We're, um, I'm not entirely sure what that question is. We have a scholarship program IPEC. We scholarship program at the moment. The price um, varies depending on the year that you're going into, but the price the prices get done for QE in July and August. So our price at the moment is just under £50,000, and that includes um, the accommodation, tuition, food, all laundry, pretty much everything apart from school uniform. Um, but I'll be happy to circulate the price list. If you want to um, just drop, I'll be happy to send you a brochure and, and price list if you want to put it in the chat room. I can send it on to you um, later today. Thank you. I'll copy that now and send that over.
any any further questions from I'm happy to answer them while we have the opportunity here now today so I'm here with you we we don't do um, a diploma program as such as in um, the baccalaureate diploma we don't do that but we do if you're talking year 12 we do a levels and we do b techs so that's what we offer but we don't offer Uh, so um, it depends at which stage they join um, Queen Ethelberg's. So um, some students and do their GCSEs with us. And then once they've completed those, they then stay and do their A-levels. So they would do four years. We can accept students from Turkey who just want to come for the two years of their high school. So they can come and do A-levels with us. So um, they would be able to do that. Um, so, but actually our students stay for a range of years. So we have preparation or foundation courses that students can do for one year, um, in year eight, nine, 10 and 11. So the minimum time we, a student would need to stay with us is one year, um, but the majority of our students stay for A-level, CSEs and A-levels. This is international students, of course. We do it in year one and go all the way through to, But no, <laughs> students can attend for four years, two years. I hope that's clear, says I. Great, I'm, I'm glad you understood. So. think that I spoke about that perhaps somebody would like a little bit more detail or perhaps some clar clarification on something that I've perhaps mentioned before So I'll be ha happy to send the presentation at all. Um, please bear in mind that it will have my notes at the bottom of it. <coughs> but yeah, happy to. Tom, I see a question on the question tab. Uh, yeah, I, I, I answered that one in the chat room. Ah, okay, perfect. That's all good. I think um, I can see there's not many more questions coming, but I just want to say if anyone's still there, that um, please come and visit us. Um, I'll put my email in. No, no. Discussing a uni prep course, I was talking about our, um, our uh, co-curricular options 
and the way we work at QE can help prepare students to go to university and for how to um, CV or add to their portfolio, if you like. Um, so A-levels them, themselves are pretty good prep, but I think all the things that we do outside of the classroom at Queen Ethelbergers will help the students prepare them for university life. Um, but no, it's not a uni prep course as such. They should be doing their A-levels, and then we would be supporting them in the classroom, but also, as I've tried to show, outside the classroom to, to make themselves, to separate themselves from the competition, if you like. So yes, in some ways it is a uni prep course, but it's not designed that way. Students would be doing A-levels or B-techs, and then we would be preparing them for their UCAS, and for their entry into university and beyond. Um, but I've put my email there, twhitehouse at qe.org. So if anybody um, has any further questions they think of later on, or perhaps you would like to visit the school and get a good feel for it, and perhaps you'd like to, to maybe come, I'd thoroughly encourage you to, to get in touch and come, come and see us in York, and we'll be happy to show you around. Well, Tom, uh, it seems like there is not any more questions, but thank you very much no. for your participation. It was really beneficial uh, presentation for us. I hope so. <laughs> it's the first time I've done it, so <laughs> I hope it was. It was really good. Thank you. Uh, I hope to be in touch with you. Uh, if you need anything, let us know. Um, take care. Yes, thank you very much. I really enjoyed it. I thought it went quite well. So yeah, thank you very much for having me on. And if anybody gets in touch and needs anything, just let me know. I'll be happy to help. Sure. Take care. Bye. No worries. Bye.